Thank you so much, and really a pleasure to being here. Uh, I think I would like to leave this local level more to a global level, because I would like to talk about a green transition. And what does it mean, the green transition? I think this is really the transfer to the global shift towards sustainable, low-carbon and environmental-friendly economy and society. And what does it mean? The main action is for achieving a green transition involved policy, technology innovation, for example, what, what we all hear about these hydrogen aspects and so on, the behavior, our own behavior, how we deal with this green transition, and investments. We need money to make the, this green transition. But what is the role of Earth observation? How can Earth observation support that one? It's the, um, in the case we picked out a little bit the energy sector because energy is one of the most important thing to support this green trend, one, of, uh, one important part in the, uh, to, um, in the green transition. And it supports the resource exploration to find the right site for green energy resources site in infrastructure planning, environmental sustainability, when you think about these ESG aspects and all the things, how, what is the impact? And also, very often we have a problem with the climate change impact with, with that these assets are uh, um, affected by, for example, flash floods, landslides, and so on. And I would like to pick a little bit, there are two different, uh, three different kind of energies that we would like to pick up, it's the mostly the energy, the, the electricity, the heat, war, the warming, the, the, the heat, and of course the, the, um, the traffic. And I would like to show the first use case that we picked up with the, with the World Bank, by the way. And I think one part in the urban and rural development in the global development is the electrification. When you see, for example, in South Sudan, 7.2% are electrified. So, or in, in somewhere in Burkina Faso, 90% of the villages are electrified. So that means there's a high potential to electrify these areas. And what we are, what they need is, of course, not, uh, uh, yeah, the focus should be to implement clean energy sources. <coughs> and, um, for that, I think for the first evaluation, what we are doing is really on a global level, we use a lot of existing data sets and layers. For example, this, in that here, we use existing GIS data, uh, global land cover and information, and also geofactors that mean climate information. Then we go to the next scale, it's or more on the regional level, where we use for very often sentinel data to have a real up-to-date information about the, about the current situation. Then we have these um, information about risk exposure concerning the assets. And I think most important is that we have to, to these access to remote sensing data, up-to-date information and reliable information. And then we go to the local level. This is more for the, when we go into the city, and then it's getting more and more into the private sector where we use, for example, also Blayard data from Airbus or other private data. I would like to show you one example that we use where we use artificial intelligence to extract information about the infrastructure, about the, the, the villages around, and that means these are the, the first information, where is the demand, how is the infrastructure, and where could be a location for these renewable energy sources. So that means we get the information about the people, demand, and so on. And for that we need, of course, the terrain information for the, for the exposure. We need some um, vitality when you think about to support also the, the agriculture sector with pumping stations. We get the information about the um, productivity of the, of the agriculture. We have um, some global layer about the water situation. It means is this area um, has, has exposed to some um, natural uh, um, hazards, for example, in that, in that way it's the, the water, um, how is the vulnerability, and then last but not least, it's the global statistic, 
that has a high influence about the productivity, about if they, the uh, um, uh, productivity of the, of, the, of the agriculture, about the number of people, and so on. That means it's really what we are doing is combining a lot of different data sources and Earth observation to get a full picture of the, of the, of the region that we use for the planning of, resource, uh, of um, energy resources. Um, yeah, that's a little bit of summary of that what I just mentioned. Um, the other one I would like to highlight one example that we also carry out is financed by ESA. It's about global development assistance. What are the m missing information when you would like to plan a sustainable energy transition? This is, you need, of course, the energy resource mapping. We have the, the, the demand, that means which, which energy resource have the highest potential, uh, the infrastructure site selection, inventory, managing energy production, and as well the vulnerability. And in that, I would like to pick up that what I mentioned before, it's the vulnerability of the asset. Um, here we have as I just mentioned, all these information about the environment, about the land cover, the, the, the flooding and land, landslide, um, and also combined with Earth observation data for to have the full picture of the situation. Here in that example, it's from, from Bangladesh. Um, we have the power line information and the transition line information, um, and then we... we, we um, um, uh, combine it. We, we combine it, of course, with these, um, f with the exposure of the of the uh, with the with the natural hazard, and then we get some information. What? Where are these? Um, can you see that? Sorry. Where are the high exposed assets? What uh, kind of uh, protection measures should be done or should be planned? And so we get the information to the planners to the. Um, investors to protect the energy um, assets against these natural hazards. Um, here in that case, we took the, the we pick up all these power towers because, in, especially in Bangladesh, we have a big problem with the full um, um, yeah with the with the um, that these power towers are very often affected by, by flash floods, they are damaged, and uh, you lose a lot of money. That's the reason the World Bank is highly interested in, in enhancing these, um, these uh, position of these, of these power towers. For that, they need the information, where are the power towers, how they are affected, and what could be the impact. Um, another example is waste. Waste is, is a big, this is especially in, um, um, also in Bangladesh, by the way, exactly. And the discussion that we had is how can we use the waste for energy? Um, when you see here the organic matter here on the left side, this could be used in a landfill for the production of methane. And also Sentinel, for example, have the 5P satellite that can be used also to de detect these, lands, uh, these landfills. The problem is most of the landfills are not documented. They are illegal, they are very large in that area. It's really amazing, and it's a resource of energy. In that case, we used these, um, we made a methane anomaly assessment, but also we added some of uh, this GHGSAT analysis to have the high resolution and the low, low resolution for first assessment and high resolution to go more into the details. So here we, you, see, you see the Sentinel 5P, where you have a rough idea about the, um, where are the anomalies of methane. And then when you combine it, for example, with, because this has a resolution of about, um, um, uh, I think 300 meters, 300 meters, I think. So it's not really um, efficient to have to, to go directly into details. But if you combine it, for example, with the information from Sentinel-2 or Sentinel-1, and you have then you have the information about the environment and you combine it with the methane and you see the anomalies, to have then to go more with the higher resolution um, satellite to get more details. Here in that case, this is um, 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 Dakar, by the way. It's Dakar. They have very large landfills and nobody exactly knows where, where they are. 
So, and then when you combine it with this, uh, with this center, with the GHE SAT, then you get the information where are the details. That means Sentinel plus high resolution give you, this, give you this, the information. Um, here, um, based on that information, we were able to make this identification of these illegal landslides, uh, landfills, landfills. Last but not least, I would like to pick up one um, thing where we used, uh, everyone knows the solar capacity. I, I hurry up a little bit. Um, where we made um, some use case in Armenia. And it's really tricky and difficult to get the data from Armenia. I think mainly they are not available, so you have to use this open layer. Here in that case, we have to see uh, the, we first of all, we use Sentinel data, Sentinel information, free layer, and so on, and combine it also with high resolution. In that case, it was Airbus, by the way, three stereo, three stereo data where we um, developed, where we use OSM, for example, for basic information, combined with the um, the, the point cloud of the 3D of the Playard uh, tree stereo. We use the building outlines, mm -hmm. uh, the building outlines from the 3D, but also from OSM and AI, by the way. And then we had to get the information about the solar rooftop um, potential. And so that means we use a lot of space data, space data, earth observation information to make, to go not into so much into the details, but we deliver a good basis for planners, for decision makers about, to have a rough idea about a, this, the potential of energy that can be produced on that way. And if you would like to have more information about this speed presentation of the use cases, we are really happy to welcome you on our booth. Thank you so much. <laughs>